Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Happy National Skipping Work and School Day. The first round of the NCAA tournament, the greatest sporting event in our great country, and the most bet on sporting event in our country. Crazy how those two things coincide. Now, before we get to LSU's draw, and if they can make the Sweet 16, let's do what we do every single year. For the last 20 years, and some longer, every NCAA men's basketball national champion has had five things in common, statistically, on their roster. So, I'm going to tell you, if you want to pick the correct champion... Statistically, it'll be a team that has all five of these qualities. And here's a quick reminder of what those qualities are. The first quality, and this quality is going to be a little bit confusing over audio because, well, I mean, it, numbers don't play well, but just stick with me. For the past 20 years, every NCAA tournament champion has had at least five players that average eight points per game, at least three players with 12 points per game, and at least one player averaging 15 points per game. Now, if you don't have a team that has at least one player scoring 15 points per game, then you have to have at least six players who score eight points per game, and the other three players scoring 12 points per game. I know that was a lot, but at least five players with eight points per game, three players with 12, and one player averaging 15. If you don't have that one player averaging 15, then you need to have more than just five players averaging eight points per game. All right. So the second one, at least three key rotation players that are at least six foot seven or taller. At least three that are six foot seven or taller. Don't have to be starters, but key rotation players. The third quality, at least one top 50 NBA draft pick. Now, we don't know who's going to be picked in the NBA draft, but you can pretty much tell at this point who are going to be the top prospects. So at least one top 50 NBA draft pick. The fourth one, every NCAA tournament champion in the last 20 years has to have at least one upperclassman at guard. Could be a junior, could be a senior, uh, could be a six-man coming off the bench. Uh, could be a shooting guard or a point guard. Doesn't matter, but it has to be a guard, a legit guard that plays significant minutes that has to be at least a junior or a senior. At least one of them. And the last one, the fifth quality, and this is important, in the history of the NCAA tournament, since the invention of the three-point line since 1983, no NCAA tournament champion in the history of college basketball since 1983 has shot less than 32.9% from the three-point line during the season. During the season, that's very important. If a team averaged less than 32.9% during the season, you will not win the NCAA tournament. So, the teams that have all five of these qualities this season that are in the tournament, only three. Gonzaga, Baylor, and Kentucky. So, statistically... History says only one of those three teams, Gonzaga, Baylor, and Kentucky, will win it all this year. Now, for those of you wondering, the teams that just missed out uh, on the five traits, they only had four of those five traits. They were Arizona, Kansas, Tennessee, and UConn. They just missed out. UConn was the big surprise. Now, let's get to LSU. Now, you can probably guess LSU doesn't have... Uh, four or five of these qualities. Uh, they only have three. And you can probably guess which ones they are missing. The offensive ones. They don't shoot the ball from three very well. And they don't have the balanced scoring of, you know, at least eight points per game with five, five players with eight points per game, three players with 12 points per game, all that stuff. They don't have enough of the balance. Uh, but I actually love LSU's draw in this tournament. And I actually think they can win two games. Now, even if LSU can win their first game against Iowa State, I like their chances against Wisconsin or Colgate, if Colgate upsets Wisconsin. Iowa State, if you look at them on paper and watching them on tape, there is nothing that Iowa State presents to LSU that would give the Tigers any trouble. 
They don't have a size advantage against LSU. They shoot the ball worse than LSU does, which is pretty impressive. They don't have a matchup problem for LSU. Iowa State plays good defense, but they're not as athletic as LSU is. They don't have any scoring coming off the bench, so they have worse balanced scoring than LSU does. LSU has a lot of top-heavy scoring. Uh, And really, all you have to do with Iowa State, it's pretty simple. The game plan is very simple. All you have to do is shut down one guy for Iowa State. Their guard, number one, Isaiah Brockington. He averages 17 points per game. He wears number one, Isaiah Brockington. So if you shut him down, then you're pretty much golden. That's LSU's specialty. Find the one guy and shut him down. That's something they've done great all year long. Now, the one thing that's not going to hurt Iowa State is that they are a very tough, senior-laden team that played in the bloodbath that is the Big 12. Okay, They're not going to be intimidated, and a lot of that really matters when it comes to March Madness. And if you think about it, it's a lot like looking in the mirror for LSU in some ways. It really is. The only other thing that I can't tell you if LSU can win this game is team morale. How is LSU going to handle being without Wade? Now, some reports have said the team was pretty heartbroken about this. One person even reported that Darius Days may have walked out of practice the first day. I don't know. But when people say, well, LSU's been through this before, they can do it again. What about the 2019 season where they went to the Sweet 16 and Wade was suspended? True, but I'm going to push back on that because that was different. One, Wade wasn't fired. He was suspended. And secondly, it had been over two weeks since Wade was suspended, whereas this time around, it hasn't even been a week since Wade was fired. The emotion is still fresh. If you remember, LSU played kind of sloppy in the second half uh, of the uh, SEC tournament in 2019 where they lost to Florida in a comeback loss. And, but then a week later, they were able to sh- uh, you know, shake off the rust and get their focus back intact. They don't have that. And plus, the emotion is a lot bigger uh, of a wound because their coach is officially gone. Now, Kevin Nickelberry, he has a lot of experience as a head coach. And I trust that he won't be overwhelmed by the situation as far as game planning, managing the game. But I I don't know how this team will respond. I don't. Now, if they get past Iowa State and play Wisconsin, I even like LSU's chances and LSU's defense and athleticism in that game because Wisconsin, well, I mean, let's just say it, they are like the most white boy team you've ever seen in your life. Plus, Wisconsin's best player, who is a top 50 NBA draft pick, some have him going in the top 15, top 20, uh, he's hurt right now. We don't know how much yet, but he's hurt. So the only thing that worries me about Wisconsin, assuming LSU were to beat Iowa State, is that they are are also a better coach team. They have better fundamentals. They're more disciplined. They rebound the ball better. They shoot the ball better. They don't turn the ball over. They're, They're just better in every other category on paper than LSU. But to say that this team can't go to the Sweet 16, uh, they can. No, they absolutely can. Because here's the thing. We can say a lot of things about this current LSU basketball team all season long, but one of the things that we cannot knock them on is effort or grit or want to or desire. That is one thing I have never had any question about for this LSU basketball team until now. So could they break the habit and start, you know, not trying hard? Sure, because this is a very extreme situation, but it's also hard to break a habit. But... I won't be able to tell if they want to until the game starts on on Friday against Iowa State. That's something that only the LSU players can tell you. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.